Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm going to apologise in advance for the length of this video but it's really important on many levels. Um, sometimes we, well, sometimes I get sent stuff and I kind of look at it or I poo-poo it and sometimes I, something forces me to go back and re-look at something I've been sent. Well, early hours of the morning, I got sent this video about, it was, Roper Cropper is a Jamaican who has a YouTube channel. He's got thousands of followers. Anyway, he had this woman on there and she was talking about her child had been taken away. And I remember looking at it and hear her bawling about them taking her child away. And I was thinking, well, what had she done? What has she... Um, you know, is she has she done something wrong why they took their, her child away? Why would anyone just come into your house and take the child? Apparently, she had just moved to Montreal. She'd only been there a month. Um, the landlord gave the police, undercover police and social worker, the key to her house. They go into the house and they tell her that they're taking her children. Then when she's appealing, they're calling her, she's saying she's unfit and she's got mental issues and the children are being neglected. Now, I'm kind of thinking, OK, maybe there is, especially because I work with children, I said maybe there is something to it. Maybe there is something that she hasn't done right. Maybe she didn't send them to school in the right clothes. I don't know. I don't know who reported her or whatever. But I'm going to show you a bit of the video in a minute. But it's somebody else's video, so I can only show you a couple of seconds. But why I'm bringing it up is that I got a letter today. Ironically, I got a letter this afternoon talking about the same thing. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Talk about synchronicity. What are the odds of somebody sending you a video about one thing, about somebody, somebody, um, the social services taking somebody's child, and then me receiving a letter? Anyway, I'm going to read the letter first before I show you the video. So the letter says, good evening. I would like you to discuss about social services interest in black children. Please warn parents from Caribbean backgrounds and African backgrounds also that social services want your children at any cost because the government has told local authorities that they need to put more children from ethnic minority backgrounds in care. I'm speaking from personal experience. Social services are not interested in children that come from dysfunctional families because the local authorities will have to spend too much money on psychologists and other professionals to correct the child's behaviour. So therefore, they only want children that are well behaved in care who are good, adoptable material. Please inform parents if social services turn up at your front door with the police. Do not let them in your house unless they have a warrant from the court. Make sure you have a chain on your door so you are in a position to shut your door quickly if needed. Because you have let them into your home, they have the power over you. And if you are married, please do not tell them. Please do. Please tell them you have no reason to separate from your husband because they use divide and conquer rule. Please use Article 6 and Article 8 in your statements and make sure your solicitor is working in your best interest. Anyway, let me show you the video. I'm only going to show you a couple of seconds, like I said, because it's not mine. It's Roper Corpa but it'll give you an idea about what's going on. Well, I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to tell you what I've discovered since, okay? I am doing very best to work with Amy Fleischer. She has nothing good to say about me. She see how me and my children have a close relationship. How when I come to visit them, we play, I bring food, I bring games, I bring books, and we read together for an hour and a half. And yet, she's alleging in court that I have no empathy towards my kids. And that hurts. Because all the school my children have been going, none of the teachers ever complained that my kids are hungry. 
Oh, God, it, 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 it really is quite traumatic, to be honest. It really is. I mean, I was nearly moved to tears. Um, what I wanted to say is that, you know, I found myself asking the following questions. The reasons why children are taken into care. Usually it's mental health issues, it's neglect, it's abuse, whether it's physical, sexual or emotional abuse. Baby P, who suffered 50 injuries over eight month period in 2007, he died. And as a result, they've come out with this really serious, um, not vendetta, but, you know, this um, program to make sure that children are safe. And so if they sense that there's anything going wrong in the family or if the schools or the doctors or anyone report anything, they are likely to take the child away. Um, there's also harm and other safeguarding issues, financial problems. If parents don't have a job and they feel that the child can't be looked after properly, properly they might take the child away for that. If the child is expressing extreme behaviours, um, if the family is dysfunctional, if there are viol if the child, I guess this is an older child, is violent, um, crimes, drugs, alcohol alcoholism in the family or addictions, or if there are any disabilities, terminal Ill illnesses that their parents can't cope with. So I found myself asking, I wonder whether that mother had any kind of um, touched on any of that you know, why they took the children. So then I was wondering, who's reporting it? Is it the GP? Is it the, um, well, this is in Canada, so I don't know if it's the equivalent of Department of Work and Pensions. Um, she was working, but as a result of what's going on, she's lost her job. So it's not like she was getting benefits. Um, so, and yes, yeah, single parents, are they more vulnerable to them taking children? Um, back in the day, they didn't even want um, black children. They were color coded so that, you know, that parents um, did, you know, parents knew that these were black children and they just didn't go for them. And then um, I think David Cameron came out with this um, bill. I'll mention that later. Um, that said that you could um, you can't discriminate on the race of a child. So it kind of did away with that. Um, I wanted to read these headlines. It's The Guardian in January 2009, which might help understand why children are being taken. I, that letter I got earlier today, it doesn't have an address on it. I don't know if that person is in the UK or where that person is. I've asked that person to let me know which country they're based in, because I can't imagine that happening in the UK. So maybe it's somebody in Canada, I don't know. Anyway, the he according to The Guardian in January 2009, the headlines read, Raise, rise in children taken into care pushes 88% of councils over budget. The number of children being taken into care stands at a 10 year high. Government data published in November found that there were 75,420 looked after children in England at the end of March, up 4% on the previous year. The number has increased every year since 2008, when the total was about 60,000. Analysis by The Guardian and the local Government Association found that 133 out of 152 councils, 88%, were res responsible for children's services overspent in 2017 to 2018. Local authorities went over budget on children's social care by an estimated 807 million, by far the highest area of overspending in council budgets. The organisation calculated that local authorities faced a three billion funding gap by 2025 just to maintain current levels of service in children in social care. It costs around 56,000 a year to look after a child in care. I'm going to stop there because I was just wondering if it if it costs 156,000, if it costs 56,000 a year to keep a child in care. I don't know what the equivalent is in Canada, but could that be a motive? Could that be a motive for abducting, I'll use that for want of a better word, children who, who seem to be 
in an ordinary family. And like that letter that I got, um, I don't know what experience she has. She wants me to call her. I haven't called her yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to. But if this is something that is happening or is going to happen, we need to be wary about why it's happening and how it can happen. Um, apparently, um, there's something called Abyss Projects. And they say now the pendulum has swung back. English councils are asking judges to make more care orders than at any time in the past three decades. I think that's what that lady might have been talking about in her letter. In the last fiscal year, they made 134 percent more such requests, mostly to place children with foster parents and sometimes to adopt them than they did 10 years ago. I didn't type it all out and then there's a little break I extracted this. Britain appears to foster more children than most rich countries. It adopts far more domestically born children than, it, than the European average, though fewer than in America. The government has responded to cases like Babel P by encouraging teachers and police officers to make more referrals to social services. Today, nearly one in 10 children in England are referred for assessment each year. I remember that act I was talking about um, in 2014, the Children and Families Act, passed in 2014 by Tony Blair. Was it Tony Blair? Anyway, passed by somebody in 2014. Made the requirement to consider race when placing children for adoption to be removed. So is it a part of a larger plan? I mean, is there something going on with um, black children? You know, it's very hard not to think of conspiracy theories because on the one hand, you've got your, our black men in jail. Then we have now our youths being targeted with the stop and search. And now, according to this, children are being taken away from their parents. And seemingly for no apparent reason than because there are families out there who want to adopt them. They want to adopt black children. And what does that do to the parents? It turns them woohoo, turns them loopy and renders them, you know, sick and, you know, they like that woman, she lost her job because she's under so much stress. So what is, are they trying to break families up and break families down? That's what I'm wondering. I'm going to have to do some more research into this because I really want to know if if there's anybody who has experienced this in England. If you know of anyone who has experienced having their child taken away when they're a perfect family, in quotes, as perfect as can be, um, you know, in the circumstances. But, you know, they're, they're not you haven't got any domestic abuse in the family. You haven't got any addictions. No alcohol, well, that is an addiction, you know, no mental or emotional abuse, no um, factors that could render a child eligible to be taken into care. If you do, let me know. Write to blackbrightnews at gmail.com because I'd really like to look into this further because I, sir, I was Googling it. I can't find anything. And, you know, um, anyway, that's all I've got to say for now. Bye. Oh, it's Friday. So if you're interested in reggae, it's going to be a spiritual vibe tonight. www.loversrockradio.com. 7pm till 9pm. Ciao for now. Bye bye.